Welcome back to the GSMC, pod, G, GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our, our fifth and final segment, which is going to be going over Chris Bryant and his very underwhelming Colorado Rockies career, and just talking about it. So yeah, let's get into it. So the reason I did want to talk about this was it has been something in the back of my mind for a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Just talking about Chris Bryant and his overall time with the Colorado Rockies now. It has been, I believe, uh, two or three years now with them. And just talking about, uh, you know, three years actually, so yeah, uh, talking about how he has done and just what's going on with him. So the reason I did pick today to talk about it is because he's expected to be placed on the injured list with rib soreness, according to um, a report from one of the Colorado Rockies reporters. So uh, he will be out again, second time on the injured list already this year. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. So looking at Chris Bryant's stats with the Rockies, this year he has 101 plate appearances with them, two home runs, a weighted runs created less of 63, and a war of negative 0.5. You also look at his career before that with the Rockies. He played in 42 games his first year with them and 80 games in the second year. So not, not very consistent, I will say. Didn't actually do that bad with the Rockies to start off. I mean... In 2022, he had a 125 weighted runs created plus. Did get hurt, so kind of stopped that. But yeah, was doing very, very well with them. Started off with kind of proving people wrong. I remember the Rockies were off too well, so pretty nice stretches there as well. I kind of knew that wasn't going to last forever. I mean, if you've heard me talk on this show, I'm not a fan of this Rockies organization. I don't think they know what they're doing particularly. And I don't really like, uh, I don't really like the direction they go in. I don't really like how they make decisions. But he was doing very well. And it kind of just stopped after that, you know, was doing horrible, was, did horrible last year, got hurt again, did horrible this year, and got hurt again. So, yeah, not great for Briss Bryant, and just has been so underwhelming for this Rockies team. Now, we did end up signing a seven-year contract worth $182 million. so he's there till 2028, an average annual value of $26 million per year. So, yeah, long-term contract, and... To put it nicely, this contract has turned into a complete and utter embarrassment and an albatross. The process of also signing Chris Bryant has been horrible, and the Rockies should catch a lot of flack for it, and I know they have. So, with the Rockies, this was at the time where you had traded Nolan Arenado the year before. You had let Trevor Story go in free agency after refusing to trade him at the trade deadline. I still don't think that was a horrible move. I think getting back the compensation pick was fine. But I know a lot of people feel, feel a type of way about it, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree completely. So I think that overall, it's fine to disagree with these decisions. So, of course, the Arenado trade, awful. I mean, we all know about it. One of the worst trades in OB history at this point it was a horrible, awful trade that was a clear way of showing the Rockies had no idea what they were doing with this franchise. So your answer to letting Chris, letting Nolan Arenado get traded letting Trevor Story leave without even a fight, is signing Chris Bryant, a guy who clear, who showed clear signs of regression in his last few years with the Cubs, then in his short-term uh, time with the Giants, and also had some injury history. That was your answer. And it, everyone was shocked when he signed with the Rockies because we're like, okay, Chris Bryant still can be a productive player. Why would he go to the Rockies out of all teams that don't have much of a plan and don't know what they're doing and are not competitive but then we saw the contract and we were like okay i probably do what chris bryant did as well you know just uh, kind of following the money which hey i'm all for player empowerment or all for players uh earning the most amount of money they can good for them and he made the right decision i'd say so just overall this this contract has been just such an albatross for this Rockies team, and it was ready when they signed it. I mean, I remember the Mets were interested in him when he was free agent. I wanted them to stay away from that, and uh, I can prove right. I never thought it was going to be a good contract, and going to an organization where they notoriously have no idea what they're doing was not going to end up very well for Chris Bryant. So overall, looking in the grandscape, grand landscape of worst MLB contracts ever, this is, this is pretty up there, I will say. An eight, a seven-year contract where the guy's always hurt, and when he's playing, he's not doing great. doesn't really have a set position. And the way that you also signed him to distract from the fact that you traded Nolan Arenado and let Trevor Story walk is also going to add into the embarrassment of this contract and what you did. So I think this contract is among one of the worst in OBS history. 
current ba- for current baseball, I think it's up there with Javier Baez of the Detroit Tigers, who of course has been horrible since coming to Detroit. I mean, he has been bad. So I think his OPS is under 500 this year, which is crazy. So you have Chris Bryant in that situation as well. And overall for LB history, I think it's up there, honestly. I think when you look at just the amount of the amount of little games he has played for this Rockies team, how he hasn't done great these past few years, is looking clear towards regression, and also how the Rockies haven't done anything to kind of help him or make him at least feel like he's on a competitive team. When you're when you're the Rockies and you have Chris Bryant who probably isn't trying the hardest, you at least want to sign some players or kind of get a future going with him to maybe say, okay, let's speed it up a little bit. you got something to play for now. I'm sure Chris Bryant would attack his rehab more vigilantly if he knew the team was trying or was trying to be good. I'm, I'm sure I, I would as well if I was in his position. But with the way that this team is not good at all, doesn't have many pieces to be happy about, I think there are some question marks about that. So Looking at the Rockies and just the future of this organization and just an overview, there's not a lot to like. There are some good pieces here, like Adele Amador, who is a good prospect coming up. You have Ezekiel Tovar, who extended as probably the future shortstop. Isn't hitting the ball great, but still brings a lot of good defensive prowess, and I think overall is a good player for this Rockies team. Michael Tolkley was called up. I think he's good. Jordan Beck, I think, has a lot of potential. Zach Veen is good as well. Ryan McMahon has really become an amazing player. I talked yesterday about how he was my vote for National League third baseman and my all-star vote. So there are some good pieces here. It's just you need to also have some good pitching with this Rockies team to kind of have anything going right for you, and you just don't have that. So there are some okay pieces here. Also, Zach Veen, someone who has kind of fallen out with the prospect rank this past few years, but I still like him. I love him coming out of the draft, so I really, uh, I still have high hopes for him, but with this Rockies team, you don't really have a face of the franchise. You don't have someone you know you can build around. Ryan McMahon's a really good player, but it's a question mark of even if he's still going to be on this team by July 31st. So there's a lot of question marks about this Rockies team, and just having this Chris Bryan contract, um, whole, um, you know, being at the top of this food chain of the of the organization and just hanging over you is just another thing that is a negative about this team. It's a negative about this organization. It would be different if you guys just sucked and didn't have anyone on the, on the payroll and could say, okay, you know what? In a year or two, when all our prospects are coming up and we like who we have, we made some good draft decisions, maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll spend finally because we have money. No, that's not the case because you now have this contract of, of Chris Bryant hanging over you and, you know, being just kind of an albatross there that is kind of making you not spend money. So this year they do have uh, this year they do have the third overall pick in the MLB draft. So it will be interesting to see who they do end up taking or who is going to be who is going to end up being mocked to them. So they could add a top uh, college level prospect, a top uh, future uh, piece of this organization. A lot of a lot of uh, mocks have them taking Chase Burns, Brayden Montgomery, Jack Click Leone, who I think will end up being the pick. So all these guys are great pieces to this team, could also end up being up quickly. So there still maybe is some light at the end of the tunnel for this Rockies team with these prospects coming up with, with a top draft pick coming in. But still, you have this just albatross contract hanging over your organization, and it's not great, and uh, it's something to watch here with the future of the Rockies and seeing what does end up happening with them. So... Yeah, that is our show today, guys. We talked in our last segment about the Colorado Rockies and just Chris Bryant's Rockies career and how he's done there. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching the show today, guys. Remember to hit the, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to not only get notified when I upload, but all the other great content creators on this channel do. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. It's a beautiful day outside. Enjoy it. And we'll see you at Baseball's Roadhouse tomorrow. Thanks, guys. And we'll be doing my power, my Friday Power Rankings tomorrow. So make sure to tune in for that. Thanks, guys. And see you tomorrow. Thanks and bye. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit. And the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go to...